Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My battery is about to run out. <laughs> How rude. Anyway, hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Josie, you can also know me as Sir Plants a lot from over on Instagram. So please go ahead and follow me on Instagram. So I originally wanted to make a video showing you common problems on leaves, common leaf damage and what it might be. But when I was making the research for that video, I realized that there's actually like a gazillion different reasons why your leaves might not be happy and why they might be damaged. So instead, I decided that I'm gonna show you leaf damage that you might think is pests, but actually is not. <laughs> So strap in, hold on to your booties, and let's jump right into it. So the first troublemaker on the list is mineral buildup on the bottom of plant leaves. So plants that might be especially prone to this. First of all, Pilea peppermoides. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> so do you see those white dots on the bottom of the leaves? That's what I'm talking about. This is just mineral buildup of the plant basically sweating, I guess you could say. It's got nothing to do with pests. It is completely harmless. And honestly, like you can't really even see it unless you look for it. So just don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> the second type of plant very prone to this kind of mineral buildup is the Piper genus. I do not have any Piper plants myself because honestly, I think they're kind of ugly. <laughs> but I'm gonna insert a photo of what that might look like and what I'm talking about. So it is exactly the same thing. I feel like with this plant or with this genus, uh, it is the most prominent. So again, it's just mineral buildup on the underside of the leaves, nothing to worry about. And the last plant that is prone to this is the philodendron genus. This in particular is my very small <laughs> philodendron mame. And uh, this one has a little bit of a different kind of buildup. Whereas with the Pilea and the Piper, it was more like salt mineral looking. With these ones, it's more of a sap. I don't know how well you can see, but there's basically these dots on the underside of the leaves. And if you just focus really closely, <laughs> You can see that there are actually little droplets and that's the sap that I'm talking about. Before I knew about that happening, I noticed the front side of the leaf and um, there are these little dots all over the place, which a lot of the times looks like spider mite or thrip damage, more likely spider mite damage. But anyway, I saw that and I was like, oh no, <laughs> I've got pests. But then I just realized that it's the mineral buildup and it's not actually pests, even though it may seem like it. The other plant that I have it on is my philodendron atabapoens and bilietiae cross. This one's kind of an awkward looking one. This one doesn't have it so much on the underside of the leaves, but it ha does have it on the petioles. This is a perfect example of where you can see um, the little sap droplets. So yeah, if you've got any sort of, I guess, bigger philodendron, those are definitely more prone to having these sort of sap looking droplets that might look like pests, but actually aren't. So the second type of leaf damage that looks like pests, but actually isn't pests is mechanical damage. This one is probably the most widespread one, uh, especially if you are bringing your plant from the shop and it gets a little bit crumbled in the bag, or if you're moving and you have a lot of plants touching each other, or if you have a plant touching a wall or something when it's growing a new leaf, then it might come in distorted and it might come in with brown spots and damage on the leaves. So perfect example of that is this leaf over here. As you can see, we've got these brown spots around where the leaf was damaged. You can think of that as sort of a scab, I suppose, that you would get like if you cut yourself or something. The main thing about the mechanical damage is that it can be literally anywhere on the leaf. So here you can see it's on the outside, on this leaf, it's on the middle of it, <laughs> on this leaf, it's kind of on the middle of it, but you can see it better from the underside of the leaf. It can happen anywhere, it can happen anytime, and it can happen to anyone. But most importantly, 
it is not pests, so there's nothing to worry about. The leaf is not gonna heal, it's not gonna look beautiful again. Um, if it bothers you, you can just cut it off and not think about it that way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, once you have mechanical damage, there's no coming back from that, unfortunately. The third type of damage is sun or light damage on your leaves. So I've got a very extreme example over here. This is my Strelitzia, Strelitzia, la, la, la. This is my Strelitzia Nikolai that has been living in the conservatory. And when I first put it in there, it got some burn spots, as you can see. This one can be especially confused with um, thrips damage because a lot of the times when thrips attack your leaves, they kind of scrape it and make it look pretty much exactly like this, where the leaf is discolored and you do have some sort of brownish grayish spots on there. But in this case, it really is just leaf damage. And if it gets even worse than this leaf, it actually does look like someone burned the leaf with like a match or something. And it, it is especially apparent when you have these dark outlines on the damage. I've noticed that this sort of light damage happens a lot with plants that don't have as much chlorophyll. So that is plants that aren't usually dark green like this neon plant. So this leaf over here is exactly what I'm talking about. This leaf was exposed to too much light and it started being bleached and eventually you can see that it's crisping up. This makes sense theoretically because when you think about it, chlorophyll is kind of like what protects the plant from getting sunburn, you could say. So I guess scientifically speaking, you could liken chlorophyll to mel melanoma. Is it melanoma? Melanin? Melanin, I think. Yeah, basically the pigment in your skin. So a lot of the times, the more pigment you have, if you have darker skin, you are less likely to get skin cancer, less likely to get sunburned. And if you have less melanoma, like a white ass person like me, <laughs> then you're more likely to get sunburned and to get skin cancer. So that's pretty much how I think about it when it comes to plants. And you might have actually noticed this yourself on any of your plants with white variegation, if you have any. It is particularly well known to happen with uh, albumons terras, especially ones that are half moons or have one part of the leaf that is completely white and the other part is completely green. And that is again for the same reason, that is because there just isn't enough chlorophyll in the leaves. So because they can't protect themselves as well, they just end up bleaching and then burning up and eventually dying off. I recently cut off most of the damaged leaves on this one so I don't have many left but this is what that looks like so like I said if you have any variegated plants you would have seen this for yourself but it kind of looks like a brown spot that starts spreading and eventually consumes the entire leaf. I haven't really figured out how to make this not happen on these plants. With the neon philodendron, when I started noticing that happening, I moved it from under the grow lights um, next to them. So it is no longer under grow lights, it's no longer receiving an intense amount of sunlight. With this plant, it's in an east facing window that is shaded by a house next to it. So it gets like, I don't know, maybe like 30 minutes of direct sunlight every single day. So not a lot at all, to be honest. And it still does get those uh, browning spots. A lot of people say that it's because the plants don't have enough light, but I'm here saying that it's because the plants have too much light. So I don't really know, but again, main thing is this type of damage is caused by sun or light, but it's not caused by pests. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> the next type of leaf damage is gonna be a couple of types of leaf damage in one, but it is gonna be especially in relation to one genus of plants, and that is Calathea. Or actually, let's make it Marantesiae in general, because I feel like this pertains to all of them. A lot of these plants, since they love humidity, when they don't get it, they freak out slightly. <laughs> Not really slightly. <laughs> so exhibit A on this plant. This isn't necessarily caused by humidity, but it is caused by me underwatering the plant. So because I didn't water it sufficiently when this leaf was unfurling, it just came out looking like this, which, you know, to some people might look like uh, pest damage, but definitely isn't. It's just something that I caused. <laughs> but a lot of the times with prayer plants, if you notice that you have uh, dry edges that often 
oftentimes don't come all the way to the tip of the plant that it's just like on the sides that is usually caused by insufficient humidity for the plant and lastly with plants in this plant family you can sometimes get uh crisping tips that is not necessarily caused by humidity a lot of the times it is caused by toxic water that means that if you water them with tap water that is too hard or just isn't filtered enough and they just don't like it sometimes you might get the tips crisping off the best remedy for that honestly is well crank up your humidifier if you have one if you don't just get rid of these plants because they're never gonna be happy <laughs> water them with filtered or distilled water not tap water just something that you know isn't polluted very big quotation marks but yeah something that doesn't have as much mineral buildup in the water as tap water does so that's humidity damage tap water damage and underwatering damage i guess you could say pertaining specifically to calathea or prayer plants the next type of leaf damage that is probably the most ambiguous one meaning that you are least likely to know whether it's because of pests or something else is yellowing and or browning leaves if it's leaves that are yellowing and browning at the bottom and they don't yellow or brown very frequently then it's nothing to worry about because plants just like with people go through a certain life cycle and just like we shed all of our dead skin cells sometimes plants shed all of their dead leaves so that they can make more room for new growth so that is somewhat the case with this plant i think this leaf is more because i forgot to water it <laughs> but this is pretty much what it would look like if you had a yellowing leaf that was just yellowing off because of old age so like i said if that happens infrequently and it's only like one or two leaves at a time then it's fine if it happens a lot more than that then there might be some cause for concern but it doesn't necessarily again mean that it's immediately pests like i said it's the most ambiguous one so there's so many possibilities with this one like i mentioned this one in particular is due to underwatering which is i would say the most common cause for leaves to be yellowing and browning off so again this usually happens only to the bottom leaves so if you underwater a plant some of the bottom leaves are gonna go yellow and eventually they're gonna shrivel up and turn crispy if it happens to the top of your foliage then that may be some cause for concern and it might possibly be pests <laughs> the next type of leaf damage is caused by root rot i don't personally have a plant in my collection currently that is suffering from root rot but i'm gonna try to insert some pictures of what it looks like basically this is one of the instances where you will get yellowing leaves that aren't necessarily around the bottom of the plant one notable difference in plants suffering from root rot is that a lot of the times the leaves start yellowing and they also have black spots on them so that is definitely like one of the most significant signs of root rot and that is because the roots are dead ergo they cannot send nutrition up to the plant ergo the plant starts dying kind of from the inside out so a lot of the times with root rot the damage is gonna start from the inside of the leaf and slowly spread outwards which is different for the next type of leaf damage that i'm going to talk about and that is the bacterial leaf spot now to be honest with you i am still a little bit of a noob in being able to distinguish between root rot and bacterial leaf spot because they do look very 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 similar to one another one thing that i've kind of been using to decide whether it's root rot or um, bacterial infection is where the damage is spreading itself from so a lot of the times with root rot like i said it starts from the inside out but with a bacterial infection it usually starts on the outside and kind of finds its way in and eventually shrivels up the entire leaf and makes it die one thing that people say is that bacterial leaf spot has yellow hue around the brown or the black spots I feel like that's not really the best indication of whether or not it's a bacterial 
infection because a lot of the times even root rot has yellow hue around the black spots so like I said it's definitely very difficult to distinguish between these two but the main point is neither of these are due to pests okay that's all the types of leaf damage that I had on my list uh, let me know if you know of any other types of leaf damage that aren't pests that I didn't mention here today also if you enjoyed this video please give it a like comment down below subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell, follow me on Instagram, all of that good stuff, and I will hopefully see you here for my next video. Bye!